Hello folks and welcome to version 2 of the Secret World Xbox 360 controller guide. Now, I've created a guide previously for you all and that was during the beta. And I created a default inverted and then a uh, not inverted version. But I've realized since then that a couple things have changed in the game regarding settings, which is really cool, made things a bit easier for stuff. The controller, though, wasn't really um, default. It required you to go in and change some things, kind of making it a bit harder for me to clearly say to you that it is the default key bindings. So I've gone through, I've remade the key bindings, and I'm going to give you a bit more of an in-depth guide on how to load it up, bring it in for those who have been asking me recently. Now, other things that I have also changed on it is I have made it so that you can actually move the mouse with the controller as well so that you don't have to switch to the mouse to control and click things or load up your um, journal or log or any of that so that's going to be a little bit more functionality functionality added to it to kind of make things easier so you can sit back relax play on your tv from the couch or whatever your choice is and how you're going to do it so let's go ahead and get started with part one and that's simply going to be how to load the profile into xpatter Let's get started. All right, let's get started a bit on Xpatter itself. So, I'm going to first remind you that Xpatter is not required. It's just an easy program that I have purchased, and I believe there are free versions out there, though I don't know if they're legal or not, so don't take my word on that. But Xpatter is a nice program, real simple to use, and it's the files I'm going to provide you with, and it's what I'm instructing you on. So, the first thing is when you get Xpatter downloaded and installed, it doesn't really require installation, it's just an exe. And if you see right here, I've got it on my desktop, xpatter.exe, and if I were to double click that, I'd run it, boom, it pops up. Now, right now it's very blank, and I've done this on purpose to show you, really simple. Some people don't know how to load things in, and I've kind of provided that for you. Now, on my website, at justingaming.com, you'll see a secret world controller version 2 guide that I'm going to be putting up and that will have the links um, for the files that you need to access so you'll go to that first I don't have it up right now so I can't show you but that's not difficult for you to figure out you'll access those files download them. now there might be three files you need the first file the one file is an image file and that's going to create an image in the background I'll show you here in a second and then the other two files are a layout and a profile. So the first thing is, let's load up the layout. If you see this little controller right here, sorry, I checked something. If you see the controller right here, you click it, you'll see all your options. Very simple. If you just click open, it's going to go over. Now I'm in I'm in my documents. So say you save them in my documents. So what I have, you'll see all these different options, and I've got all these different things, but the one I've used right here is TSW Controller Setup. I'm going to click that one. That's the one I'm actually going to provide you. And boom. Now what you'll see real quick is you see it loaded up an image for me. So it should by default load up the image for you. If it doesn't, I provided that image for you. And hopefully you can figure out how to load it up yourself. I'm not going to go into that because, well, mine loads up automatically. So not forget. So. All this is is the basic layout. Now what you're actually seeing here is that I have the controller and all the possible buttons on it. Now we need to add a profile. So you're going to click this right here. It looks like a little notepad. Click it. You get new options. Now you click open and we'll scroll down and you'll see. Now I've got this 360 TSW. That's my profile that I use personally for my edited um, controls. but. I've got the default inverted and default non-inverted. So we're going to start off with the default inverted. And for those who are confused, inverted is regarding the camera movement. So if you push up on the camera movement, it will look down. You push down the camera movement, it will look up. So we load it in. All of a sudden, it pulls in a huge profile of everything for us. And now we can see all of our controls. So there's the basics for how to load it up into Xpatter. You have to have Xpatter running every single time in order to use the controller in the game. But what's nice is it will keep your most recent loaded profiles um, up for you so you don't have to load them every single time. Just the first time is enough. 
So thank you for that. We're going to move on into the next part now. So now that we got the profile and the controls loaded up into XPatter, the question is what do you do next? And while I did not change any of the default key bindings, there are some settings that we do need to change in the secret world to make it more um, reactionary. There's such things such as the ability queuing and dodging are the two main things that we actually need to go change. Not so much key bindings, but it is settings we need to go change. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna hop on into T the TSW, the secret world, and show you how to make those changes real quick and then we'll get started from there. All right, we are now here with my character and I'm gonna show you just a few couple things that you do need to change. So we're gonna go into the menu and we're gonna go into settings or you can push F10 real quick for that. You got your few options here. What we wanna focus on here is interface options. It's kind of odd for what we're gonna do. But if we scroll down our interface op uh, options, we should see an option about ability queuing and dodging. Okay, here's weapon equipping right here. And you see right below it, disable double tapping to make an active dodge. You want to click this. You want it checked. If you don't have that checked, then occasionally when you're using a controller to move, your character is going to dodge all of a sudden on you, and you don't like them. We've set dodge up for a very specific key for the game so that you don't have to worry about that. So you want to turn that off. You want to check mark it so that you don't accidentally dodge randomly. So that's the first thing. So we go ahead and click apply there to make sure that it stays there. And the other thing is going over here to the HUD, H-U-D, HUD. And the very last option says enable ability queuing. We're going to check mark that, uncheck mark it actually. We don't want ability queuing. So we're going to click that and we're going to click apply so that ability queuing is turned off. And I'll get into here in a moment on why we did that, but it's gonna be very important for the controller set up with that. So we wanna make sure that we have ability queuing turned off. So once again, in general, under interface options, you wanna make sure that you have disabled double tapping, check marked. And then underneath HUD, you wanna have enable ability queuing. You wanna uncheck mark it or make sure it's not checked so that your abilities are not queuing on you. So. That sets that, we hit apply, we hit OK, and we are now ready to get started with the next part of the guide. All right, so you're with me, you've got X pattern loaded, you've got it set up, you've got the changes for dodging and the changes for the ability queuing change now. So now it's time to play, right? Well, yes. So let's take a quick look at what exactly these controls work and how does it make you able to play the game with the controller? We're gonna look at, first thing we're gonna look at is the simple combat controls. That's the first thing I set up is combat controls and then we'll go over and look at mouse controls following that. Now, be very peculiar. You're, I have it set up. You'll have to move your skills around to how you like it, but I'll get more into that when we get to it. So let's get started. Let's jump on back into the game and let's have a little bit of fun playing Secret World with the controller. Welcome to the controller part of the guide. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's not waste time. Let's start off with camera movements. On our right joystick, we have camera movement. It moves the camera. It's using an actual combination of the right mouse key and then moving the mouse up, down, left, right. Going down on this joystick will make you look up and going up will make you look down. This is inverted view. There is a not inverted view available to you. The left joystick will control my basic moves of my character. Right will straight left, right, left will straight left, forward, forward, backward, backward. Very simple. I chose strafing because we don't need the turn left, turn right that A and D provide us because we have camera movements. That's the point of using the camera movement. Now, let's get into the combat. You will quickly notice that on the A, X, Y, and B buttons, we have jumping. Then we have abilities one, two, and three. Now you're wondering, where are the other four abilities? Well, if you hold down the left trigger, the left trigger will pull up abilities four, five, six, and seven. This allows us to be able to utilize all seven actives within the secret world. The next little factor here is tab target. The left bumper will act as tab target for us, allowing us to switch between our enemies. So let's jump down in here and let's get into some quick combat. Alright, so we're just going to start off 
I'm gonna use my auto attack. I'm gonna throw up myself a little bit of a shield. There we go. Let's use some hammer. So as you can see, I am able to do this stuff and I can pull up and use each of my abilities as we go. It's all personal choice on what you do, as long as you get it. Now you see I got a little item here. If I push the up arrow, I set it to V, that will auto loot for me. So that takes care of auto looting. As you I got my weapon out, if I push the right um, the right bumper, that switches between the weapons. Very nice. And the down button will switch me into sprint mode. Down on the D-pad allows me to sprint. Now, they added in a feature into the game, which was not in when I first made the previous guide. And that is dodging. So let's find ourselves an enemy real quick here. Something simple. Here we go. We got some guys here, some townies. And let's show dodging off a little bit. Kill the first few, really simple. Take them out. Let's bring it down to just one enemy. Alright, so I'm gonna dodge by holding down the right trigger. See, I can dodge the right now, and that's all it is. The right trigger allows dodging. That's why we had to turn off the dodging by um, double tapping, because it accidentally triggers itself sometimes. Let's go over here and auto loot this real quick. Alright, activating my sprinting and getting out of the way. Now, you were probably wondering, why did you turn off Ability Queue? I want an Ability Queue. Well, with the controller, I've added in a functionality that I think works a lot better. And it's the... What the f functionality really is, is Turbo on controllers. If you watch, I'm going to attack this guy. I'm just going to hold down my number three ability, the B. And it's going to click it tons of times. But it's just going to keep going. I don't have to click it more than once. I just hold it once and it's auto, it's turbo using it really fast. So a really nice feature to add into there. Now, for some other features here, the D-pad on the left will add an auto run for us, D-pad left. D-pad right opens up the journal for us. Sometimes you like to use that really quick. And the select button opens up the map for us to view. And you can view the map and move around in it. Now, what I've added into this feature is a new thing with the start button. You push the start button and it's going to switch you into combat mode. And into mouse mode, sorry. So start will switch you between combat mode and mouse mode. Now in mouse mode, I can actually move around the mouse. You see the right joystick and now moves the mouse up, down, left, right. Allowing me to do several things. If you look at my triggers, the left trigger is left mouse click. And the right trigger is right mouse click. Making those things very simple. The left bumper allows me to escape, which can bring up this menu here, or can escape out of windows you have open. So let's look at it real quick. Left click, opens up the menu. Let's left click, bring up inventory, move around. So I can right click here to clip this gun, or I can right click it again to switch it. I can hold left click. You can drag and move things in its place. Very nice, simple feature with it. We're going to click here. I, I can click here to exit out or I can hit the escape. Closes out for me. Other things I've added in here is the functionality to open up all the windows. So in this mode you have the Y button is the assembly which is actually over here for some reason. So let's drag it over. There we go. So Y is there. Push it to close it. I push the B button. Opens up my journal. Close my journal. Push the A button. Opens up lore. Close the lore. Push the X button, opens up PvP, push it again to close it. If I push the up on the D-pad, it's going to bring up the skill points window, close it, push right, it's going to open up the, uh, this is actually skill points to end, what the up was ability, sorry. This is the skill points, close it, push down is inventory, and push left is character sheet. So I've added in a nice little functionality. Now to get back into combat mode, you just simply push start again, and you're back into combat mode. Well, that about does it for this guide. We got features. I've added in some nice functionality of being able to use the mouse so you can sit back, relax on the couch, play on that TV, however you want to play. Hopefully this functionality helps a lot for that fact. And I hope that you enjoy it.
Well, thank you for joining me today as I show you how to use x Batter with an Xbox 360 controller in the Secret World. I believe the game has a lot of potential with it. It's only seven skills that you have to be able to uh, maintain. It makes that so much easier. And it's very nice with the controller setup once you get used to it. Now, if you are looking for more guides from me on anything or more stuff that I work on myself, you can head on over to my site at justingaming.com and you can find everything I put up there. I've got my Twitter, I've got my YouTube, all that's located there, you can follow it. If you are watching me on YouTube, please, please, please subscribe to me. If you wanna follow me on Twitch, I'll do live streaming of The Secret World and other stuff there as well, you can, but you can find it all there. So, please follow me, upvote this, like it, whatever it is, thank you, and I hope you all enjoy playing The Secret World with a controller and Maybe it'll make your gameplay experience better if you like the controller better than the keyboard. So, I'm going to see you all later. Maybe see you in the game. Have a nice day.